Teachers, what are your stories of, oh God, this child is a sociopath? Story one, not a teacher, but I only remember the story because I had witnessed the fallout. In 11th grade, there was a girl, let's call her Carol, who was crazy about the cartoon Sonic the Hedgehog. To the point where a teacher threatened to fail her on a writing assignment if she turned in yet another Sonic fan fiction. Instead of actually doing work properly, she handed in an angry letter to the teacher as her assignment. Can't remember what the specifics of that letter were, but I do remember it was such that she got suspended for the remainder of the year. When she came back in grade 12, she had to apologize to everyone in her homeroom for her actions the previous year. It's in this apology that she tells us she had a brain tumor the size of Quebec. The kid from Quebec naturally yells at her for comparing Quebec to a brain tumor. Carol did a lot of other stuff besides the angry letter that year. She mentioned in her apology that she got a girl in trouble for vandalism so she, Carol, could get the lead role in a school play. She dressed up as a grim reaper for some old person's funeral and accused my friend, whom she never had any prior connection to, of tricking her into thinking the funeral was a Halloween party. Since this happened in May, the excuse was made of toothpicks. She got a zero on a term paper for math because she accidentally submitted a poorly written and creepy Sonic fan fiction instead of her assignment. She threw a temper tantrum to get the teacher to change the due date. Nothing came of it. And that's just the stuff she admitted to. The kid from Quebec naturally yells at her for comparing Quebec to a brain tumor. I bet the kid did it in French, too. Comment on s'est vous comparer à la prune de yo du Canada on est tumeur? Votre mère était un hamster et votre père est la sourire. Sorry for my terrible French pronunciation. Story 2. I taught a four-year-old boy who actually scared me because I fear what his future will be. I can see him ending up doing some awful things to people. He would try and kiss and hug girls, and when they didn't want to, he'd hold them tightly and try to anyway, even if they loudly protested. I explained that there is no kissing in school, and if someone doesn't want to hug, they absolutely do not have to. I also said that some people don't like hugging. He said, well, I want her to, so she will. He just couldn't understand boundaries of any kind. This is just one tiny example of the things he did. I did refer him as I believe he has autism and he's undergoing assessment now and awaiting a diagnosis. But I worry there's something else there with him. He would also watch other children to see how he should act. For example, a child might be sad and another child comforts them. He would copy this behavior but totally exaggerate it, like completely over the top and use it as an excuse to touch others, mainly girls. He never showed any emotion other than anger and jealousy. He had a very scary look in his eyes, and I've never met another child like him. I worked in a daycare and had a child like that. It was only after he, five-year-old, took his dong out and laid it on the table that one of the workers called CPS, suspecting that he was being physically abused at home. It was only after someone mentioned it that some of his past behavior started clicking. It really breaks my heart to hear about kids like that, especially when it stems from abuse at home. That's just the worst kind of thing to hear about, and I hope they're able to get help. Story 3. I teach dance and had a six-year-old I'll never forget. For the record, all six-year-olds are terrible. Developmentally, they're all starting to flex their egos, and it can be a mess of personalities. But here's a collection of things that occurred that made me realize this child was a sociopath. I'll call them A. Had a child fall asleep in the middle of class. Poor thing didn't get a nap that day and just flat out passed out in the middle of dancing. I picked her up and placed her on the side and she slept through class. Next week, A spends the whole class pretending to fall asleep. The fact that they had remembered the previous week and knew to emulate the behavior is very odd for that age. Fake cries on a dime anytime I tried getting her to follow along with class. Absolute crocodile tears. Dry face. Isn't allowed to be the line leader because they were last week? Fake tears. Isn't allowed to guess the Disney song because another student already guessed it? Fake tears. Anytime they didn't get to be the special kid? Fake tears. Had them sit out once due to not following instructions after giving a clear, if you do X one more time, you will sit out and then follow through. Proceeds to start whining like a goddamn dog because she claims a student kept staring at them. Complete disruption. Turns out some of my students is autistic, and the fake crying and whining A was doing for attention was overstimulating them. It was a freaking feedback circle of these two triggering each other for a whole year. What really got me, though, was A came up to me and said they had a rash and needed to sit out. This is after they spent 10 minutes sucking their arm to make it appear they had a rash. Told grandparents after class, and they just... 
Yeah, they've been doing that. Um, what? How does a six-year-old have the wherewithal to plan out faking a rash like that? At the end of the year, the mom gave me a gift card and a note that basically said, thank you for putting up with my child. Story 4. I currently have a student in my special ed academic support class who is just so manipulative. My colleague and I mostly joked how he's probably drowned a cat just to watch it die or something just as serial killer-esque. He's habitually truant, so most of the time he's not a problem, but he really knows how to manipulate everyone around him. He's not smart enough to manipulate adults effectively yet, but he can get the other students going. He instigates things with students who are much less intelligent than he is and plays the victim. He gets away with it because the other students aren't cognitively able to give their side of the story. He lies constantly about banal things. Like, he went around saying that a knockoff LV bag that he got at a charity shop was worth $3,000 and threw a fit when I wouldn't let him take it to the bathroom with him and accused me of wanting to steal it. The next day, he admitted he knew it was fake. The one day that he'd been here in the last month, he accused one of my students of buying drugs. It turns out that the cognitively disabled boy that the little sociopath manipulates did, in fact, steal marijuana from his mother and put it into this girl's bag in the morning. She found it there and didn't know what to do with it, so she left it. This little bastard came up to me and told me about this nefarious drug deal that happened in the morning, and this girl had her things searched and ended up suspended, and her parents grounded her for six months. She's miserable coming into school every day. He hasn't been back to see the damage, but I'm sure that he'll be excited when he sees that he's spreading misery. I am so happy every day his name appears on the absence list. This child will appear out of nowhere, drop a bomb on the classroom, and then disappear for weeks. It's almost insidious. <sighs> yeah, while I really want to sympathize with kids who are troubled because it can often stem from problems at home, there also needs to be accountability. I still feel bad for them, but my sympathy doesn't erase responsibility. Story 5. Not a teacher, sorry, but when I was younger, maybe 8, I remember going to some family gathering way out in the country. There were tons of distant relatives there, great-grandparents had 11 kids, and therefore lots of cousins I didn't know. One girl, probably 4 or 5, was scared. All of us kids would try to play with her, and she would just act strange. But one thing I really remember was someone was showing us some baby chicks letting us hold them and pet them. My mother had just explained to us, be very gentle, they're babies, etc, etc. Well, this little girl is holding a baby chick on her palm, looks right into my mom's eyes, and just squeezes this chick until its eyes bulge. They stopped her, and to my knowledge, the chick was fine, but I'll never forget the look in her eyes. Immediately after this happened, her dad scooped her up in his arms, and she just looked back at all of us, smiling maniacally. Story 6. I have an ex who was a preschool teacher, and he affectionately calls his students my little sociopaths, not to their faces or parents. Because that age is just empathy, is a learned skill, let's put it that way. I had honestly never thought about it, but he taught me that things like hitting is bad because it hurts people and hurting people is not a good thing is something that kids have to be taught, and it's much harder to get them to understand it when they're older than like four or five. I think he said three is really when they start to get it, but often parents are still treating three-year-olds like babies. My mom was a teacher for several decades, and she taught some real winners too. There's a kid a few years younger than me that she had, and she never explicitly said anything bad about him because he was the son of one of her friends and lives in their neighborhood. But that kid was straight from a frickin' horror movie. He's adopted, and one of the first things he did after his parents brought him home was to shut the family dog in the refrigerator. One time he sneaked up to my parents' house in the middle of the night, we live in the middle of nowhere, so this is terrifying in and of itself, and tried to break into our house. My parents usually left the doors unlocked at night, and I would go around after they went to bed and lock them. When that didn't work, he cut the electrical wiring to our outside lights so it was pitch black outside and we couldn't see anything, and then slashed the tires of my car and tried to break the windows. He used to just beat the crap out of other kids, especially younger ones, whenever the mood struck him. That sucker is like 30 now, and he's still a total piece of crap. Like, he still lives with his mom, and he's gotten her house swatted at least five times because he deliberately goes online into spaces where that's a thing and antagonizes people. Then takes off to leave her to deal with the fallout. I'm hoping to be an adoptive parent myself one day, and sometimes I have nightmares about this kid because as far as I know, his parents really did try super hard to help, but it just never worked. Story 7. 
Had a six-year-old the size of a nine-year-old pin a four-year-old to a wall and at least looked like he was trying to feel her up. I walked up behind him and shouted, what the heck do you think you are doing? And he immediately backed off and started stuttering, trying to explain himself. He would say some fricked up crap too. One time he walked up to me, a six foot tall bearded man, and said basically, hey mama, let me suck on them titties. Hated that kid. If you told him to do anything, he would intentionally do something to go against what he was told. His parents spoiled him rotten and let him do whatever he wanted. He got away with anything because a former teacher had inadvertently injured him, and his family, who are filthy rich, threatened to sue the dog crap out of the school. He basically had immunity from discipline at school and parents that let him do whatever he wanted. He hated me because I wouldn't put up with his crap. I never heard him, but I would put him in a hold so that he couldn't move fairly often because he would constantly sucker punch other smaller kids for just about any reason at all, even if he just wanted the toy they were holding. Kid was a little sociopath with parents that were rich enough that they enabled the behavior. Ah, so the school put their money ahead of the safety of the children. Story 8. This one happened just the other day, and obviously I'm going to be anonymous about it to protect the children's identity. Let's call her Abby. So I'm driving a minibus of students home from a basketball practice when suddenly Abby starts screaming, Did that have peanuts in it? I'm allergic to peanuts. She begins hyperventilating and crying and actually makes me pull over so she can get off the bus and throw up. We're about 15 minutes from the school and I'm literally having a panic attack, so I called the principal and asked what I should do. Do we have an EpiPen on hand at the school, etc.? She seems confused and puts Abby's grandmother on, who tells me she wasn't aware her granddaughter, who is claiming she can barely breathe, had any allergies. When we got back to the school, I was about ready to faint, and the principal brought out her registration paperwork to show me no listed allergies. She isn't allergic to anything. It was all an act. The hyperventilating, the crying, even the throwing up was all for attention. Story 9. I taught a 15-year-old boy who was really creepy. He'd submitted a creative writing story that was debauchery fiction in which he graphically described how a white blonde woman was being violated to corrupt the purity she feigns, which was quite scary as a white blonde woman to read. When confronted by a vice principal, he started ranting about how he hated all the girls in the class because they were all bees, even though none listed had ever had any interaction with him, positive or negative. He then wrote me an apology letter where heaps of the line were aggressively crossed out with smiley faces drawn next to them. At the last confrontation by vice principal, he got really aggressive, walked out, and punched the school fence several times. Unfortunately, he wasn't expelled. The incels are getting younger and younger. <sighs> I don't know what this kid was being taught at home or online, but it sounds like he really needs some help. Honestly, that's some scary behavior, and at 15 could develop into something violent if he doesn't get some counseling or something. Story 10. I've seen students display all sorts of extreme behavior over the past 20 years teaching in challenging schools. The one kid that I was convinced was a psychopath just quietly refused to do anything he didn't want to do. I never saw him angry, and yet I did see him hit people and say awful things to them. He was always eerily calm. He was tiny and very cute, but he used to manipulate people and watch chaos unfold with these huge, unblinking puppy dog eyes. It was like he was carrying out an experiment. Anyway, that was when he was about 14. He's 19 now and serving a life sentence for a horrific gang murder. Last line caught me off guard, but I should have seen something like that coming. Story 11. So I'm not entirely sure if this is a sociopath or psychopath, but I had a child that was creepily into my pregnancy for the first seven months. He wanted to name her, talked to my belly, etc. Then one day it clicked that I would leave and he got really close to me and whispered, When you come out, I'm going to kill you with the hammer. I hate you. I was so shocked I took him with me to the office. The LSSP asked why he said that. He replied, I will take her away. I want it to die so she stays here. He was on a lot of medication for his incredibly violent tendencies. He had tried to kill his sister before by pushing her in front of a bus. His mother kept him locked in his room at night because she found him standing over her with a knife. What. The. Frick. Story 12. I worked with a student who would fit this description. The stories of the things he did are extensive. One example is that he got up from his seat to throw something away. On his way back, he walked up behind a student who was distrace working on his assignment. Out of the blue, he pushed the working student's head forward and into the desk. He gave him a bloody nose. 
There had been no previous altercation or source of friction between the two. His parents were divorced and his mother was too afraid to have him during the days she had custody. His father would move him frequently from school to school once his behavior got so bad that the school started the process to get him into psychiatric care. Future prisoner. It's insane to me that parents don't get help for this crap and think everything will be okay. There's nothing that gets my blood boiling, quite like parents sweeping a problematic child's behavior under the rug because they don't want to deal with it. They are essentially enabling that child to grow up to be a monster, and it's just awful. I feel sad for, yet terrified of, kids like that. Story 13. I have a million stories of students who say borderline sociopathic stuff, but the worst thing I've ever heard to date was, I can't be trusted with knives. My mommy hides all the knives in the house from me because I've tried to stab everything and everyone. I know if I stab an animal or a person too much, they might die. This would mean I'd go to jail, and I don't think I could make it in jail. So I want to find a dead body and stab it over and over again. This way I know I won't get in too much trouble because the person was already dead. Story 14. Two twin 8th grade boys, literally frickin' lunatics, threw their dog across their living room and it landed on the edge of the table. They said it was dead but still moving and they buried it. Dude, they buried a live frickin' dog. This was confirmed by neighbors and they're now in the appropriate facilities. Messed up times a million. Hang on, I need to go hug my dog. What the F? I actually had to pause the recording and then re-record this comment because I got a little too emotional. I can't stand animal abuse and needed to go give my two pups a treat. If you have pets, give them a pet for me. Story 15. Story from a friend. As the new teacher, he got stuck doing after-school definition a lot his first year as a high school teacher. He didn't mind because he always stays late anyway with paperwork. Now, at some point, he had only one student for detention, and he says she is the worst human being he's ever met. She told him that he will start making her as having attended the detention and all future detentions, or she's going to say that he assaulted her. Lucky for him, there's both cameras and microphones in the classrooms. So that's never happened, and he did report it to the principal. She was later expelled for bringing a knife to school and cutting another girl's ponytail off in the bathroom. That is one angry kid, and she probably has a good reason. I hope she gets help. Story 16. I had a student while I was doing my student teaching 8th grade. He was constantly in trouble, but during the times he was in class, he just stared off with the most vacant look in his eyes. It truly scared me. It was downright creepy. One day he was up at the whiteboard writing some stuff, I think it was correcting sentences, with a bunch of other kids who were doing the same thing. I was watching the kids at the board, and all of a sudden I heard this blood-curdling scream and looked over. He had brought a hypodermic needle and had stabbed the girl next to him in the leg. He had been holding it in his hand the entire time just waiting for the opportunity to stick someone. It was of course terrible, but the girl turned out okay. The worst part was, besides that, how he laughed when security came to get him. Ugh, I'm shuddering now just thinking about it. Story 17. A five-year-old kindergarten student started crying. He didn't want to go into the classroom. His mother told him he had to go anyways. The kid stopped crying, took off his belt, and started whipping his mother. As a teacher, it was the first time I was completely speechless. This feels like learned behavior. This child has watched someone else or been hit with a belt and thinks it's a way to get what you want. More worried about where the child learned this than the child right now. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 18. Had a high school freshman who is a very boisterous kid and youthful for his age. One day he was being disruptive and acting up, so I asked him to step out of the room while me, my co-teacher, continued the lesson. I calmly explained to him why I had taken him out, why his behavior was disruptive, and asked him to be more mindful in the future. He seemed attentive to me and to understand where I was coming from. Then, just as I was about to go back in with him, he said to me, Okay, I'm going to start crying so everyone thinks you yelled at me. I immediately put the brakes on. I asked him why he wanted to do that, why he felt it was okay to lie like that, and why he wanted to make me seem like a bad person, when I had been very polite and thought we had a good interaction. He didn't have any good answers with me, but we had already spent enough time out of class. I got him to agree to go in quietly, and we went on with the lesson. Needless to say, it was a sign of things to come. He turned out to be a gossiping, backstabbing little social monster. The more mature kids learned to keep their distance from him, and he cultivated friendships with other kids who enjoyed his acting out and emulated it. 
We finished out the year on reasonable terms, but as he went on to other teachers with different classroom styles, his behavior worsened and derailed many classes. I applaud your way of handling it, though. You did the best possible thing, in my opinion. That really feels like a learned behavior, whether he picked it up from his parents or somewhere else. That feels maybe less sociopathic and more, this is how mom gets away with stuff, but I, I could be wrong. Story 19. Had a child who enjoyed stalking and terrorizing younger children at daycare. You could see he got a wicked kick out of it, and we were basically powerless aside from taking children away from him. He was beyond awful. A colleague looked after a child who was so jealous of his younger brother that he was slowly poisoning him by adding household cleaners to the milk. Then parents tried to get him to have milk one day, and he refused and admitted there was cleaner in it. At four years of age. Seriously, God help us, because some people are just not right from the very beginning, and I don't believe they will ever come right. Story 20. Not a teacher, but my wife is. When she was about eight months pregnant, she had a kid try to kick her stomach, try to stab her with scissors, and threaten to kill her regularly. She's a kindergarten teacher. Okay, that one last sentence took it to another level. Story 21. His sister annoyed him, so he killed her kitten in front of her. Complete and utter lack of remorse. Just didn't see animals as any different from toys. Violence towards animals during childhood is very common in serial killers. Story 22. I'm a gymnastics coach. This was several years ago, but we were running summer camps that were open to the public. One week, I had a six-year-old boy who threatened to slit my throat because I asked him to wait his turn to do some skill. Pick your battles, kid. Having EMTs and police all over the place won't get you up on those uneven parallel bars any quicker. Story 23. One of my students, 11 years old, pushed a huge Christmas tree over on an elderly man and another small child and laughed hysterically. His reasoning? It's already January 3rd. Christmas is over. Unlike the other replies, I can argue with it. If you go by the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas ends on January 5th. I'm... I'm not sure when Christmas technically ends is really the thing we should be focusing on here. And more seriously, at first I was thinking, well, kids do dumb stuff without realizing how harmful it can be. But then I remember this kid was 11, and that feels well into the age where that would come close to an excuse. Story 24. A first grader, Madison, made up name is made up, pushed a friend off a high stool in a art room because the other girl wouldn't share her crayon, immediately give up the crayon even though she was in the middle of using it. The friend wasn't badly hurt, but said she didn't want to sit with Madison anymore, so I said okay and moved her. Madison burst into tears and told me that I had to force the other girl to sit with her, that it wasn't fair that I told the other girl that she didn't have to share, that it wasn't fair that I told the other girl that she didn't have to be friends with Madison if Madison was hurting her and making her feel bad, and how unfair it was that the other girl had fallen off the stool just to make Madison look bad. I just can't even with Madison. Literally nothing is ever her fault. If she steals something, it's the other student's fault for giving it to her than lying about doing so. I've seen kids actually doubt themselves about whether they've given Madison their things even though I watched her steal it. This girl is six and has gaslighting down to a science. Story 25, not a teacher, but at my kid's daycare there was a bona fide sociopath in the making. This kid would inflict harm on others with a genuine smile on his face like he was playing, but he was secretly enjoying it. Hitting, biting, punching, kicking, breaking toys, destroying artwork but very secretive and carefully planned when teachers or parents weren't looking. He was really intelligent and well-spoken for his age as well. Yeah, he was asked to leave after a few years, and pretty much every parent there was relieved. Story 26. Not me, but my friend teaches fourth grade, and she had one of the kids write a story in great detail on how they would murder their family and get away with it. Story 27. Had a kid that was, is, basically Charles Manson. Has been aggressive before, stabbing kindergartners with scissors, hitting, biting, scratching. First grade began new behaviors. He would convince other kids to eat crayons or go tell other kids to say hurtful things to others. This was also the year he became more controlling over girls. He would invite them to play, then if they didn't do what he said, he would get the group to push the girl out. The result was the girls really wanted his attention. When the girls realized it wasn't worth it and began abandoning him, he became aggressive again. This year, second grade, he has begun trying to find like-minded kids and create a gang of bullies. Of course, the staff are trying our best to curtail the behaviors, but the parents are very litigious. 
Multiple school psychologists and social workers have recommended individual therapy and social minutes, but the parents insist it wasn't needed. They said that we were lying about the behaviors and wanted their own social services person to come in for observation. So, obviously, the student was on his best behavior. He is not stupid by any means. He knew what was up. The parents then used those findings to stonewall us for six more months. I do not believe in any child beyond saving, but there are kids that really cannot be saved by public schools. This kid needs more social slash psych minutes, smaller classes, and more adult attention. We just don't have the money to provide that, especially when parents want to fight us every step tooth and nail. Yeah, kids can be scary sometimes, and the scariest part is when you realize their parents aren't just going to defend them, but actually sabotage you. I mean, I get it. No parent wants to admit their child is going down a really bad path and needs help because it's kind of like admitting you failed as a parent, which isn't necessarily true. Even if it is true, parenting is hard and it is totally okay to need help. Parents, don't let pride get in the way of making sure your kid gets the help they need. Story 28. Anthony was six. He had violent tendencies toward animals and other children, severe headaches, and a teddy bear containing the ashes of his dead sister. You closed out with that as if there's nothing more to explain? Story 29. Not a teacher, but I was in his class when it happened. This was in seventh grade, I think. The teacher asked everybody to turn in their homework, and he asked for an extension because he was absolutely swamped for the last week. The teacher said no, and instead of just being okay with it, this kid picked up a chair and yeeted it across the classroom at the teacher. It hit her on the forehead, and she had to get stitches. Kid was expelled. Story 30. Seven-year-old knew that if the little kids put toys in their mouths, we'd wash and sanitize them diligently. When this kid got mad, he'd go over to the Lego bin and slowly spit one fat loogie into it before mixing up all the pieces. He'd then spend the rest of the day reveling in the knowledge that some poor teacher would have to wash and dry 5,000 pieces of Lego. Traditionally, that involves into a pillowcase and 20 minutes in the dishwasher slash washing machine, so not bad when you realize. Story 31. Not me, but my mom is a teacher. She had plenty of these stories, but the one thing that sticks out to me is the one time she reprimanded an eight-year-old girl for being aggressive to the other children. Nothing too serious, just name, please let go of, other child. You're hurting him and he doesn't like it. The girl turned to my mom, looked her up and down, and said, I'm going to make sure you lose your job. You'll never teach again. My mom said that the threat didn't scare her because my mom had done nothing wrong, but the way the child said it shook her to her core. Birth of a Karen. Mrs. Johnson, I want to talk to your manager. I have been coming here as a student for years, and I will not be treated this way. I am an American citizen, and in this country, we are born free. Story 32. Had a student who wasn't the best behaved, but hadn't caused a ton of problems yet. A rumor started going around school that he had killed the neighbor's dog. I don't remember why, but it is obviously concerning. Another student said to him, Hey, they said you killed your neighbor's dog. Did you really do that? Or something to that effect. And this kid immediately said it didn't die. Nothing else. No emotion or explanation. That was probably just to get the kids off his back. If I know high schoolers, they will savagely bother you about anything, and going along with it is the best way to solve the problem. He did that, but also made it seem like they shouldn't mess with him. Story 33. Elementary school, a rich, preppy white boy, 11, drew a picture of only black boy, 10, in class. It showed a dead, decapitated body with lots and lots of blood and a chainsaw. He then calmly explained to me how he was planning to murder and cut up the other boy and how he doesn't deserve to have presents for Christmas as he's black and Santa doesn't like black kids. Had to contact the headmaster and parents. Joke's on him. The headmaster was a very cool black lady. There are some behaviors that you can't fully blame on parents, but I feel like a racist 11-year-old almost certainly has crappy racist parents if he's acting like that. What a little monster. 34. So I had this kid moved from another country two years ago, and I got him this year. Was warned that he was difficult. We hit it off quite well. He is difficult and loud, but manageable. All of a sudden, he wants to talk to me alone and starts crying the moment we are alone. He starts to tell me his life story from being neglected by a stepfather who is abusive towards him and that social services were already involved, so they moved and so on. But he didn't want me to do anything in case it got worse. 
I got in touch with the psych team and my boss, and we were discussing how to move forward. We decided to talk to the parents first and get a feel for the situation, so I invited them for a talk, and holy crap, the mother was nearly burned out, the stepdad started crying because apparently their son was tyrannical and making their lives a living heck. I was not expecting this. Story 35 I was providing in-class support for a six-year-old student who had very concerning behavior. Let's call her Jamie. I was lucky that Jamie liked me. This did not stop her from kicking, scratching, and biting me whenever I would attempt to stop her. Jamie's teacher and I were working together to collect data for the school's diagnostician, but one thing we could never even begin to understand is what was triggering her negative behaviors. When she wanted to be, she was a very sweet kid. I knew that she could make good grades if she cooperated and worked on her assignments. But randomly throughout the day, she would go on a literal rampage in the classroom, throwing things, flipping tables, attacking students, shouting and cursing. Once, she even darted out of the classroom, out the side door of the school, and towards the main road. She would play with her friends at recess, and then an hour later, I'd have to pull her off those same kids while she swung her legs and fists at them. I remember one day I had taken her out of the classroom until she calmed down. I said, Jamie, I just want to help you. I want you to feel better so you can go play with your friends. I'm not mad at you. I just want to help. What would make you feel better? And she stared at me with a blank expression. I actually acted like this as a child. I got better as I grew up, but it turns out I'm bipolar. Not everything is psychopathic. I think that's a good thing to remember. Teachers aren't equipped to make full psychiatric evaluations of kids and what is causing behaviors. Hopefully, Jamie got the help she needs and is doing better. Story 36. I was an assistant at a licensed care center. There was a room, three years old, that was problematic. There were four children that were very problematic out of the ten regulars who came every day. One of the boys caused chaos because he thought it was funny. He laughed when he hit someone or when he ran around the room throwing chairs and knocking playsets down. One time I was putting him down for a nap and he looked me dead in the eyes and said, I want to tie you up. Not the craziest here, but hearing a three-year-old whisper that to you with a tiny smile in a darker room is definitely concerning. Story 37 Principal took me outside the class for a while to talk about something. The minute I came back, everyone was silent and one kid was standing at the board, marker in one hand and razor blades in the other, one jammed into the marker cap. No idea why he would do that apart from, holy crap, he wants to see me cut my hand off. Suspended, if I recall correctly. Yearly project for 10th through 11th grade, the kids had to assign themselves into groups of four. They all ended up in their groups, apart from one kid who remained the stereotypical loner kid at the back. I asked him if he wanted to join any group he saw or make a project on his own. And he just looked into my eyes and said, I don't care, they'll all soon be dead anyway. Ugh. I had to take him to the principal, and he simply said, I didn't mean it as a threat, I just relish in the fact that one day each and every one of them will be actually dead. I just, holy crap. I still remember this to this day, it's been like seven years. To be honest, I can totally see him saying this to comfort himself, trying to get perspective on how long school will last, after being stuck alone yet again when the teacher told the kids to self-assemble into groups. It's been over 20 years, and I still remember the horror of hearing the teacher tell us to find our own groups with me knowing I'll inevitably be singled out at the end and humiliated. Yeah, for a 10th to 11th grader, this does sound like something an edgy outcast might say as a way of deflecting how they feel. I feel bad for the kid, as it sounds like he could use some friends and therapy. Story 38. My first year teaching, I taught three grades in remote northern Ontario. Had a boy in grade 7, age appropriate, not level, hump my leg. By far my weirdest teaching story, but I've got loads that I'm very certain folks thinks are enhanced. There is no need to enhance teaching stories. The real versions are crazy enough. We often say to each other, yeah, can't make this crap up, when an incident occurs. Wait, grade 7? I thought you meant 7 years old, yikes. Story 39. When I taught at the university, a student in the class was arrested, and, at least if other students are allowed to believe, it was because he tried, or at least planned to, kill all his roommates. I never would have guessed that looking at him. Story 40. I had a fifth grader that had been kicked out of her zoned school. She was pretty quiet and liked to draw in a journal at recess. One day I caught a glimpse of her drawings, and she was basically drawing comics of her torturing classmates, including debauchery stuff. As I walked her to the office, I asked her why she was sent to our school, and she very plainly said, I ripped my teacher's skin off her hand because she took my notebook. 
Story 41. It doesn't compare to some of these stories, but I work in a preschool class, and I just know some of these kids will be serious trouble when they grow up. There's one little boy who lives to taunt and hurt the other kids. Anytime you discipline him, he physically attacks you, throws chairs at you, and screams bloody murder like you're hurting him. I have another boy who does the same, except he also loves to tell you that you must not love him anymore anytime you discipline him. He does it just to manipulate. It's so twisted. Oofta. This kind of sounds like something he might be replicating from someone he knows, which is unfortunate. Can't say for sure who, but saying that kind of crap to a kid means you might just mess up a kid in the same way. Story 42. Not a teacher, but was a camp counselor. He was 12 to 14, talked a lot about parodies on YouTube that talked about killing people. He was talking to me about a Frozen parody of Do You Want to Build a Snowman, but something along the lines of Do You Want to See a Dead Body or something. He mostly talked to me and not the other children as he kept to himself. I told him we weren't going to talk about that stuff at camp. He also had a little brother, six years old, I had in my camp group once, more of a little crap, swore a lot, and threatened the other kids a lot. He also thought he was more mature than the other kids, like when another camper his age asked a question a six-year-old would generally ask, he would respond with, for frick's sake, and roll his eyes. What I understood, parents weren't in the picture and were being raised by grandma and grandpa, met them a few times briefly on pickup, and they seemed like generally nice grandparents. Story 43. This is kind of tame, but I had a kid who was a big biter. Everyone around him, including me and the lead teacher in the room. One day I sat him down and just asked him, why? Why do you bite? His response? I like the way arms feel in my mouth. Story 44. I walked in on a kid saying, I want to be Ted Bundy. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Al Bundy. Story 45. I got a new student in fifth grade who had already been diagnosed with so many things because you couldn't be a psychopath slash sociopath till you're an adult for the most part. ODD, her mom had schizophrenia, a whole long list of issues. Definitely not going to get that diagnosis in fifth grade, but the stepmom came to school to warn us about her. Y'all, she was my best student. She stole anything that wasn't nailed down, but my class was so crazy we already had like three EBD diagnoses and the admin just threw the rest of the bad kids in funsies that I think she felt like she was with her people, lol. She got great grades. She never made a peep. Weirdly wholesome. Story 46. I go to an international school that has lots of different people in it, kind of irrelevant to the story. Anyway, back in primary school, there was this kid, let's call him Roman. He was abusive to teachers and other students. In first grade, he attacked the teacher and had the whole class in one half of the room whilst everyone watched in horror as he rained heck on the teacher's desk. He even peed on it. A couple of years later in third grade, he decides he wants to be a prick again. Soon after, he was expelled. I still wonder where that guy is. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.